Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another AP CSA lesson where I, Goldie, take you through Unit 2 using objects. Today's lesson is calling void methods. Now, we've already seen this a little bit in lesson one, um, but today I'm going to give you a few more examples of how we can call void methods um, and what they, what they look like. So we're going to jump right in with an example. Okay. So we haven't done this example yet, so let's kind of go through and check out what this class is um, representing. So we start off with public class game. So game is our object. Um, remember we said objects can be tangible physical things like a dog that we did in lesson one, or in this case a game, it can be kind of an abstract concept. Okay? So you'll see our instance variables for our game. Um, right there we have two of them. A no int number of players and boolean game over. Both are private, which um, is part of encapsulation, protecting that data. Next we have our default constructor, uh, public game, where number of players and game over gets set to two default values. We have a method that adds a player to num players. So you see it's a void method, public void add player with no parameters inside those parentheses there. So number of players increases by one. And then we have a method that changes game over to true. So again, it's a void method, public void end game, no parameters. So we're gonna use this class. We're gonna assume that the game object game, so you see game object is a capital G, and then lowercase g has been properly declared and initialized in a method in a class other than game. Okay, so what that means is that's um, that's a lot of the times the what the directions will say on the computer science exam um, in a class other than game. Remember that you cannot create a game object in the game class. Okay, in order to create a game object, you have to use an outside um, uh, an outside statement to create the game object. So this is what's happening outside of this public game class. So we have the game object here, and then lowercase g, that's gonna be our reference. Okay? Now, it's okay to do this, uppercase g, lowercase g, as long as you don't get confused with it. Um, the capital G is referencing the class, and the lowercase g is just our reference variable. Then we use our new constructor, our new, excuse me, keyword, and then our default constructor. Notice how this class did not have a parameter constructor. Okay? Parameter constructors are not um, necessary. You do not have to have them in your program, although they can be good to have in your program. This segment of code is just going to use the default constructor, where number of players is going to be equal to 1 and game over equals false. So the next line says which of the following statements are valid. So we have four different statements and we're going to go through and talk about what would be a valid statement and what would be invalid. Okay. So if I have game.numplayers++, plus plus, so game is my reference, and then numplayers++. Plus plus. Now numplayers is a instance variable. Okay. Now it wants to, you can kind of infer what this code wants to do. It says it wants to take your game object and increase the number of players by one. Okay. That's what it's trying to do. Now does it do it successfully? Now num players over here, the instance variable is private. Okay. It's private. And what private means is that other classes cannot edit your data. So this is invalid because num players is private. You cannot change the data directly with a line of code that does that. If num players was public, then yeah, okay? So let's say if you left off this private and just had int num players, you'd you wouldn't be respecting encapsulation which is again a pillar of what we want in OOP, um, but you could then have this line of code and it would be valid, okay? There, um, it would be totally fine, but we want that private there, okay? We don't want um, to violate encapsulation there. So because it is private, this is an invalid code segment, okay? The next one, game 
dot add player. Okay, add player with the open close parentheses signals that we are calling on a method. Okay, so our game reference is going to call on the method add player. So our game reference is a game object. So we're going to go to the game class and we're going to look for the method called add player. Okay, with no parameters, and then we're going to do what the code says. So this is a way where we can add players, num players plus plus, and not have it violate encapsulation. This is a valid statement. The method is public, so add player is called, and that method will modify games num players. Okay. So that is going to satisfy encapsulation because the add player method is a method inside the game class and those are the only things those methods are the only things we want to be able to modify our data okay the next one game dot game over okay so game over with the parentheses after it um, means that you are signaling a method call so even though there's an instance variable called game over java is not going to look at that Okay, it's not going to check that out. It's going to look for a method called game over. And if you notice, there's no method called game over. So this is an invalid statement. You'll get a compiler error because there's no method called game over. The last one, game dot end game. Again, it's a method call because you have the open close parentheses. So it goes to your end game method. And then it says game over equals true, which means games game over gets switched to true. And in that data, it becomes true. So this is a valid, um, a valid statement because the method is public and game is called and it will change games game over to true. <laughs> if any of those methods were private, we would not be able to call on them from another class. Any private methods can only be accessed in the class that they are in which we want to be able to access those methods, so that's why they're public for us right now. Okay, so here are some things to remember when you are calling void methods. Okay? The private modifier means that only code inside the class can directly access it. Public means that any code can access it. Okay, So with your instance variables, you have to put the keyword private in front. If you don't, it's automatically public. Okay. Um, so you have to put the keyword private. With your methods, you want to explicitly state that they are public. Again, if you leave that off, um, by default they are public, but it's just good code to explicitly say these are supposed to be public, a public constructor and public methods. Return type, both of the methods we had are void methods. This means that they do not return any values back to whatever called them. All they did in our example that we just did was update our instance variables values. Sometimes they might just print off statements. Um, sometimes they might do something, but they're actually not returning anything. We'll check out returning methods in lesson three. Okay, or excuse me, in lesson four, I think. <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk about methods that actually return something um, in a few lessons. The method name, remember that it's good coding style to always start with a lowercase and then do camel case. Um, and it's also good style to have it be in action, but um, but it's not necessary. Okay, you'll just see that kind of a lot in, um, in our examples that you see. And then for parameters, in this, for both of our methods, they the parameter list was empty. Okay, open closed parentheses. Um, now in lesson three, that's when we're going to be talking about a parameter list and why we might need a parameter list. But for calling void methods um, without parameters, you're going to have the open closed parentheses. Okay, we're going to go over one more example, and then we've kind of covered most of the calling void methods um, that you'll encounter. Um, so here's another one, public class animal. So animal is our object. There's one instance variable called type. Okay, so only one instance variable for this animal. I have two constructors. I have a default constructor animal and then a parameter constructor that accepts a string. And then I have three methods. Okay? All of these are void methods with no parameters. Okay, So you can see all of them have void 
void void and then all of them have no parameters in their parameter list okay? they all do something different the talk method just prints off a statement the same name method prints off um, the type of the animal that you have created and then if you look in the greet method we see two statements that we haven't quite seen before these are method calls but there's no dot notation in front of them. They're just calling on the method, right? They're calling on talk and they're calling on say name. Now, what does that mean? We'll see in, in a, a few example segments of code what happens when we actually run that greet me method, okay? Um, this, the instructions say, what does the following code segments print? And assume that this, that the code segments that you're about to see is in a class other than animal. So this would be in like a driver or a client class inside of a main method. Okay. So here's our first code segment. It's, <coughs> ooh, excuse me, I'm sorry. One second. Ooh, when you talk too much. <laughs> um, three statements. The first statement creates an animal A equals new animal. So A is our reference, and we use the default constructor to create a new animal. So A is a type unknown. The next line of code says A.talk, meaning that A, our reference, is going to talk. So in the talk method, system.out.print says, hello, I am A. And that's all that prints, right? And it's a print. So it just prints, and then the cursor is left at the end of that statement. And that's all that this line does. Okay, A.talk just printed, hello, I am A. <laughs> and that is it. The next line, A.sayName, right here, says go to the sayName method and print type. Now, since A was the calling reference, the type A type is unknown. So what gets printed off here is unknown okay? because that was A's type. Do you see that kind of chain there? Um, it prints off on the same line because originally, again, we had just a print statement. So hello, I am A printed. The cursor did not move from the end of the line. So then when you went to print off this, unknown printed on the same line and then the cursor moved to the next line, okay? So a lot happened with those three code segments, okay? But at the end of it, with those three statements, hello, I am a unknown. Okay. Let's see another example here. So we're gonna create an animal B equals new animal, and now we're gonna use the parameter constructor right here. Okay, where doggy is going to be T and get assigned to type. Okay, so B is our reference and our type is going to be doggy. Okay, that's what that first line did. B dot talk. Okay, B dot talk did the same thing that A did, right? Because you can see here in this line of code, no matter what type of animal you have, all animals are going to talk the same. They're going to say, hello, I am A. And that is it. Okay. Now, when we get to the say name, that is when animals behave differently. Okay. Because in the say name, it depends on what animal, what the animal's type is. So here, when you say B.say name, B's type is a doggy. So when you system.out.print type, you are gonna print off doggy because it was B that call, that did the say name call. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, let's have a couple animals here. We have an animal C and an animal D. Animal C was created with the parameter constructor and is a type kitten. D was created with the default constructor and has a type unknown. Okay, so you can see the visuals right there of C and D. So these two lines of code okay, happened right here. Next, we have D dot say name. Okay, so very important. It is D 
D that is calling say name. Okay. So when say name happens, you print off the type of D since D was what called it. So what's going to print to the council? Unknown. Because D called the say name. Okay. Next we have C dot talk. Okay. So C is going to call talk, and we already talked about how this statement actually behaves the same no matter what ends up calling it. Okay. Now this print line, when unknown was printed, the line means that the cursor moves to the next line. So on the next line, you're going to have print hello I am A because that was the C dot talk was that right there. Okay. Hello, I am A. And then the last one, the last line here, C dot say name, means you're going to go to say name and you're going to print off C's type because C is the one that is calling say name. So hello, I am a kitten gets printed off. Very fun. It's like a web, <laughs> right? You have when you call on these methods, you have to pay attention to what object is calling it. Because even though all objects have these same methods, they may or may not do the same things, right? So talk did the same thing no matter what object called it. But say name did not do the same thing, okay? Say name printed off different types based on what animal called it. Okay? Calling void methods. The last example, we're going to talk about greet. Okay? So first let's create an animal f. Okay? Animal f right there is going to use the parameter constructor. So this is what it's going to look like in memory. Okay? And then we have the f.greet. Okay? So f.greet means that f is calling greet. Okay? And there's two statements in there. The first one says, go to the talk method in this class and use it for the calling reference variable f. Okay? So Java, when there's no dot notation in front, it'll say, OK, this talk method is located in the same class. Go to it. OK, so talk is up here. And then run talk as an f animal okay as because f was your reference variable that called greet in the first place okay so again it's kind of like a web a chain that you got to kind of follow here so talk is going to run as an f as your f object okay so hello i am a is going to print off okay now we got this say name okay so now that that run talk ran so this statement is complete so now the same name method is next. So this says go to same name method in this class and use it for the calling reference variable f. So say name is going to go to the say name method and it's going to run this code as a ver as a variable f, as an object f. So print line type means you are going to print off f's type. Hello, I am a whale. <laughs> Gets printed off. Calling void methods. All right. And that is actually the end of the lesson already, believe it or not, um, where we called non static void methods without parameters. So, non static, remember, meaning um, they work on objects. We had void methods and we did not have any parameters. Okay? We had open and closed parentheses, no parameter list. Um, so that wraps up our computer science lesson. Thank you so much for following along and I will see you next time.